No, a year before I started journalism uh, college in uh, NBC's Woodstock in New Brunswick, I had a chance to watch this guy in person. Very impressive quarterback for the Toronto Argos. The game was in 1983, that beautiful summer that year. Uh, he went from college, not say um, being held back, but black quarterbacks were not accepted Back in the day, many of them would came to Canada to uh, toil and to uh, celebrate the game with the various CFL teams that respected black quarterbacks. But when Conrad Holloway Jr. Uh, first came to Providence University of Tennessee and later in the CFL, the Arthur Dodger, as he was called, <coughs> was one of the, uh, the first African-American quarterbacks to receive national exposure at the pro level. Him and Chuck Ely and a few other, uh, what he called, uh, groundbreaking uh, players. Now, Holloway was born to Conridge Holloway Sr. and Do Dorothy Holloway. Conridge's grandfather on his father's side was born a slave, but was emancipated as a child in 1865. Dorothy was hired to work at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, in 1962, uh, becoming the first Amer African American employee of NASA. Now, I went to Lee High School in Huntsville and eventually found his way to that outstanding uh, team, of course, uh, uh, Tennessee. Now, when he started as a high school baseball player at Lee, he was named to the ABCA High School All-America Baseball Squad. He was eventually selected as a shortstop by the Montreal Expos in a 71 Major League Baseball draft. Holloway was Montreal's first pick, and he was the fourth player selected overall. However, Holloway's mother, assisting her son to attend college, uh, refused uh, to sign the contract. Conrad was uh, 17, too young to sign a contract under Alabama law, and instead, again, he went to Tennessee. In so doing, Holloway became the first African American to start at quarterback position in a sex school. Uh, now, in addition to being the first black quarterback at Tennessee and in the Southeastern Conference, he was also the first black baseball player in Tennessee history. The outstanding prospect bypassed a baseball career, and Holloway opted instead for a two-sport collegiate career and went on to excel in a diamond. He garnered all SEC and All-America honors as a shortstop in 75 and finished with a 353 career batting average. Now, Holloway... Still the owner of Tennessee's longest collegiate hitting streak at 27 games, was selected to Tennessee's All-Century Baseball team, making him the only Tennessee student-athlete named to the All-Century squads in both baseball and football. Now, in his three seasons as a starter at Tennessee, he directed the Vols to the 1972 Astro Blue Bonnet, 1973 Gator, and the 74 Liberty Bowls, with an overall impressive record of 25-92. He ended his career with his best interception to attempt ratio in Tennessee history, throwing just 12 interceptions in 407 collegiate attempts. During his three campaigns, he went 238 for 407 for 3,102 yards and 18 touchdowns, and rushed for nearly 960,000 yards with nine uh, scores. Now, after leading the Volunteers through three bowl game appearances from 72-74, he was drafted by the NFL in 75, but only in the 12th round as a defensive back by the Patriots. At the time, few pro teams had African-American quarterbacks uh, starting in the NFL. Holloway eventually went to the Canadian Football League and became a superstar, first playing for the Ottawa Rough Riders in 1975, and then when he moved to the Argonauts, he was the, he was, uh, the Argonauts sensation, a household name in Canada, uh, tremendous results and tre tremendous quality player. He captured the CFL's most outstanding player award in 82 and guided the Argos to the great, championship, uh, great Cup Championship in 83, which was their first title in 31 years and erased the uh, sting of course, the uh, of the uh, infamous uh, loss uh, to Calgary in the 71 Grey Cup on McQuay's fumble. Now, Holloway finished his prestigious career in the CFL with the Lions and was inducted to the CFL Hall of Fame in 99. Now, currently, Holloway uh, serves as the Assistant Athletic Director at the University of Tennessee. He's also co-owner of uh, D1 Sports Training in Huntsville. Now, in 96, he was part of the SEC Football Legends representing Tennessee. In 2010, he was selected to the 70s All-Decade Team in Madison County, Alabama, high school basketball players by the Huntsville Times. Now, on February 20th, 2011, 
Uh, ESPM uh, uh, Films released The Color Orange, The Color Rich Holloway Story. It was produced and narrated by country music star Kenny Chesney. Now, uh, for uh, uh, very interesting articles on uh, Color Rich, uh, Cynthia Fuchs did an article called The Color Orange, The Color Rich Holloway Story in uh, popmatters.com uh, in February of uh, 2011. Uh, also, um, uh, Canadian Hood, uh, Football Hall of Fame, the uh, Conrad Hall, uh, Hall of Fame page on uh, CFL.com. Now, uh, the the uh, the idea about uh, Conrad and it's it is really showing there. He he wasn't what you call a, a very very um, what's the proper term. He never lost uh, control. Like he was a very, very guarded person, winning with Ottawa, of course, winning with Toronto. But let's go over it again, the stats. CFL All-Star, 82. CFL East All-Star, 78, 82, and 83. Most outstanding player in 82. Jeff Russell Memorial Trophy in 82. And, of course, the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame and the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame. So, uh, Conrad's career, uh, if you can find some tape, there is some YouTube uh, games on... Uh, uh, talking about his uh, great play in the playoffs and in the Great Cup. But Conridge, uh, it was a super time for Canadian quarterbacks. Now, uh, just to remind everybody, you had uh, Tom Wilkinson and Warren Moon in Edmonton, right? You had J.C. Watts in Ottawa. You had Conridge in Toronto. Dieter Brock in Winnipeg. Tom Clements in Ottawa and Hamilton. And uh, uh, Jerry Dettelio, Joe Barnes, uh, you know, uh, Roy Walt, uh, household names all... Uh, uh, tremendous Ron Lancaster, earlier uh, Russ Jackson. Uh, the quarterbacks in Canada became much bigger than the league itself. Sure, the NFL quarterbacks are, are, are well respected in the States. But with the short league with only nine teams, every quarterback in Canada was a household name. And we, and a lot of them were there. Chuck Ely, of course. Uh, There's a lot that uh, came in and really, really produced and became part of the community. Some people stayed and became official Canadians down the road. But Warren Moon said it best. He said, if you can make it in the CFL as a quarterback, you can make it anywhere. And a lot of uh, great CFL quarterbacks went on to great careers in uh, the NFL. Uh, and Doug Flutie, of course. Don't forget Doug. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is our first. We're doing a series of uh, CFL-related podcasts on the top quarterbacks uh, in the league in the 70s and 80s. Look uh, look forward in the next few days. And the reason why I'm doing this, I know uh, CFL season is done. But to see the CFL come back from almost a year off and still have that national recognition for their players is just, uh, just tremendous. And... You know, uh, in the hockey nation and the baseball nation like Canada, to see the CFL still so very successful. And uh, we, we respect our sport, we respect our players. And uh, every time you see the Grey Cup, it, al- it always is the best football game of the year, isn't it? doesn't matter NFL or whoever it is. It's a tremendous. So that's the story, The Legend of Conrad Rich Holloway. If you like what you're doing here, give us a like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for listening. Bye.